guys, so you might be wondering why I look like I do, but as you can see, I'm doing some work behind me. Um, I just wanted to share this. It's like um, a DI do-it-yourself how-to video on um, staining. So I'm not going to make this video incredibly long, and that's because staining is actually quite easy to do. You kind of just have to come up with your own method of how to go about it. As you can see, I have a fair amount. This is a, a China cabinet that I purchased from Wayfair. Um, now, I purchased the China cabinet unfinished because at the time, they did not have the finished product available. So I'm going to see, well, while I'm talking to you guys, I can pull up... Um, what the finished cabinet looked like because I'm pretty sure I took a picture of it. Uh, just so you can see, I'm trying to recreate the look of the finished cabinet. Now, like I said, at the time I didn't have it available. Um, I purchased it, let me see, I think February and they said that, uh, first of all, I wasn't really able, I couldn't really find the finished cabinet, and then I was like searching for it, and then it said it would be available in like April, and I didn't want to wait, so I, the finished cabinet was about, I want to say 200 and, it could have been 280 to $250 more than the unfinished version, so what I decided to do was just purchase the finished one and just stain it myself. Okay, so... I purchased the finished one and finished it myself. Now, I wasn't exactly sure how to go about doing this, and I looked up different methods, and um, I was thought maybe first I could paint it, but then I looked up, I came across staining, and to me, that sounded like the best option because I wanted the wood to look natural. I didn't want to, it to look painted. So when I came across staining, there were all kinds of methods for staining. Now, one of the simplest methods, and now I guess there are varying opinions on this, but having used it and just... Um, work with it and this is like I'm a beginner first timer and you can see how um, it's turning out behind me is um, the gel stain so um, I'm using the general finishes gel stain product um, I would pick up the can but I gotta say my gloves are really soiled let me see I'm using the Java General finishes gel stain. Okay. Now, if you Google that or look it up on YouTube, ja their website is pretty awesome. They give you, they have also on YouTube um, how to videos. So I learned from that and then from watching other people's um, videos. Now, most people, when they were using it, they were doing like cabinets and they were doing, uh, which I'm actually considering doing the cabinets as well. Um, since I've worked with this and I see how easy it is. Uh, they were doing cabinets and they were doing um, the mo mostly cabinets or like tabletops or whatever. I didn't see anyone do like something like what I'm doing, which is a full China cabinet, um, which is it takes a bit of finessing because you have areas like underneath <coughs> and like back walls and stuff that you need to get the product on and get it on evenly. Um, but for the most part, able to do that, you just kind of got to use your elbow grease and get in there. So, um, I will show you what this looks like. This is so, this is basically, I saved about 200 and I can't remember if it's 280 or 250, but a good amount, I'm going to say just put it even 200 because obviously I spent to get the general finished product and I'll go into that price later. But this is what, oh, can you guys even see that? I don't even know. Dum, dum, dum. Okay, if I put it up close, this is what it looked like when you buy um, the finished version online. There's just so much light. I don't know. Okay, you can kind of see it. So, is that better? It's a dark, the, the dark, it's, there's a lot of light in here, so it's not that great. I'm trying to get this to focus. Um... Or maybe I can just insert it later, but this is it. And the darkest bit is basically the whole color of the cabinet. You can't see it as... This, the darkest parts, that's the color of the entire cabinet. It's that dark part, but it's kind of hard to see it. 
um, here. But so that's what it looks like. And I am doing my best to kind of recreate it. Um, now, they might have used a slightly lighter stain, but I wanted to go with the stain that uh, I saw other people using. I didn't want to take a chance with like, they might have even mixed two stains. I didn't want to take a chance with like a walnut or anything like that because I think the darker stain um, just would give it the best look. So, uh, this is how it's coming out so far. Okay. And I'll just share with you whatever my methods have been. Um, I wish I had gloves on, but it's dry for the most part, what my methods have been. So um, first thing, you want to treat the wood. I had this was unfinished um, wood, and you, I had to sand it first. So I had to sand it with, um, and you can find all this stuff when you go to their website and look at their how-to video. But I had to sand it with a 120 grit um, sandpaper and then a 150 grit sandpaper. Now I use this, which is really, really awesome and it made everything super easy. Um, I just purchased this part for $8 and then you just purchase the strips of sandpaper, whatever um, type you need, grade you need, and then you, you just attach it and Put, push down the clamps onto the sandpaper, and there you have it. You have a nice hand sander. It made everything super, super easy. Um, so then after sanding with the 120 and then the 150, very light sanding, I took a vacuum cleaner and I vacuumed up all the dust. And you want to be careful when you're working with, with us and all that to keep your face covered. So I'm actually going to cover my face now. I also, <clears throat> I also have a HEPA filter running in here just to help clean the air out and a window open. So um, obviously you want to have lots of gloves. Um, I had to work with whatever gloves I had. I do have disposable gloves, but I like the, the latex gloves a little bit better. Um, the thinner ones are better to use. And then you want to get a lot of um, uh, shop cloths because you're going to need these basically to soak up the gel stain. So the best method for me, I first was rubbing the mineral spirit onto the wood and then applying the gel stain over it. But I decided to do the other method was to use 10% mineral spirit and mix it into the gel stain because it helped thin out the gel stain because I didn't want the cabinet too dark. Because if you put enough of this Java gel on, it can kind of look very black-ish. So this is actually just one coat. Um, and this wood soaked up the gel so quick because as you can see on this side it's unfinished wood and this is just one coat and I do not even some people you can cow and let it sit and then wipe it off and then see like play with how many times how long your count is and how deep the gel will soak into the wood and then you know eat, get, do that all the way around so that you get the color you want for me I put it on and I take it right off because this wood just soaks it up so easily. Um, so that's what I've been doing. So I'll kind of just, and I've gone with the mixing it with the 10% of the mineral oil kind of thins it out a bit so that the stain isn't as dark. So that's what I've been doing. And unfortunately, I do have one more pair of gloves, but I don't want to use them because um, they're really meant for my dishes and they're really cute pink gloves with little cheatery design. So uh, I'll just stick with these for now, but I'll just show you the method. So you can use terry cloth and you can just use these wood, wood shop cloth. And I was using terry cloth and I went through about four of them. And you gotta be careful when you're using the cloth because if the cloth is already saturated, it's not gonna do its job of pulling out the extra stain from the wood. So you're actually just gonna be not getting the effect you want. So I switched over from those cloths once they became really saturated and started using these wood, wood, um, workshop cloths and I just toss them in the trash and they actually pull out the oil really well. Now I first started out using a paintbrush, but the paintbrush, um, I thought maybe it would give it a, a nice like look it just doesn't make any sense. And I've already come across videos like that. Me personally, it don't make any sense. It's too messy. It flakes the stain everywhere. And 
by the time you get the paint brush to give you enough coverage, it's like already drying in some areas. So it's much, much faster if you want to just apply with a rag or what I personally like is using a foam brush. So you can, I got many different size foam brushes here. What I did was put it in the cup, this is a disposable cup, put the um, gel stain in here, the Java gel stain, mix 10%, and I kind of just eyeball 10% of the mineral um, spirits, and then use this uh, brush to get the coverage on, and then wipe it off right away with some workshop cloths. So I'm actually going to get a couple of these cloths ready. I can do this whole side with two to three cloths. That'd be great. Um, Cause I'm running low. I still have to do the bottom portion and inside. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just finish what I can for tonight, clean up my work area, and then do the rest of it tomorrow. Uh, I do need to put the, there's a second part to this, which is polyurethane, which is basically, this has a lot of pigment in it. So you, um, some people might put it on and think that you don't need to seal it, but you do, you have to protect the pigment. So the next step is to do a polyurethane. Um, we come back and show you guys how to do that. But if you want more information on that, you can just go to the General Finishes website and or their YouTube video and watch the help too, which is basically you're putting on the polyurethane um, once it dries overnight, and then you are sanding it very lightly with, I think it says here, um, a 220 grade sandpaper and then putting on the second coat. Uh, they say up to three coats, but in the video she does two. I think two will be fine for me. All right, uh, so I'll show you very quickly. I would do this. Now, some people work with small sections, but I find that when I did that, it was just not a good idea. Unless I'm working with something that's separate than the rest of it, like this piece of here is of wood is separate from the rest of the wood, then that's okay. But if I'm like putting one strip and then wiping that strip and then putting another strip, because um, that was some girl's method on here, so I tried it. To me, that wasn't a good idea because it started to dry and then you would overlap the strips and it looked like um, you had a second coat in some areas where it was overlapping. So I like to just do full coverage as quick as possible and then wipe it off. Ooh. Ugh, that keeps happening too. Or some gets on the floor because I've thinned it out. I'm trying my best not to do that, but I've done that several times tonight already. I put down some uh, magazine, but it might be uh, some, you know, magazine pages. It might be even a better idea to just put down a drop cloth. I do have a drop cloth, actually, I just purchased because I got permission from management and I'm going to paint the apartment. So I'm just doing like a whole makeover of everything, my life and my surroundings. And I actually received that message during my meditation that that is something I need to do for my mental, for my health, basically, and to make me happier. So. I'm doing it. They really have a good discount going on that actually ends tomorrow at Sherwin Williams when you get like 30% off of everything. So I saved $60 on paint uh, earlier, which was great. Okay, so as you see, I just put it on and then I just wipe it right off. And that's it. You 
a good staining job, you're going to be able to see the grain of the wood. That's what you are going for. You don't want to cover that up. Okay, so we still have some more cloth left here, so we're going to keep going with this and keep going. Now I'm going to go down this way. You want to do, do this following the grain of the wood. I'm just going to push this this way a little bit. Okay. Try my best not to get it on the floor. So as quick as possible, basically, as much coverage as possible, and then wipe it off as quick as possible. Now, I find that putting the 10% mineral spirit helps this product because this product is really sloppy. So it helps the product spread faster and more evenly onto the unfinished surface. As you can see how easy I just got that on there. Now, it's been on there a while now. So now I'm going to take you want to have everything in arm's reach. Now I just give it some pressure and wipe it down. And I'm pushing because I want to take as much of this off as possible. If you want it, you don't mind it being a little dark, you don't need to put that much pressure on it. Another thing is I can just kind of sit, go up and down with it and pull off a little more of it if I want. But you kind of want to try to stick with going in the, with the wood grain. You guys can see how it's going over here. I probably will take a picture of it. Um, this is pretty saturated, but there's some more blue left, so we're going to keep using it. I probably will take a picture of this and then post it at the end of the video so that you can see the finished product. And when there's like more light in here, because it's late actually. But I have to just, I might as well keep going with this, but I have to, uh, I can't just go to bed with this out and stuff. You know, I have cats and I don't need, want the product to dry up. Because whatever's left, most likely I'm going to just use it on my cabinets and redo the cabinets. Um, and then order some more. To finish up the finish up the cabinet so I have to like clean up my workspace and all that so I might as well just get this done for the night and just before I could go through all that okay good coverage. It helps sometimes to kind of shimmy the brush up and down like that. Pot is in here. Told her to leave here several times. But she keeps coming back. So when she goes in, I'm coming this way. They actually made it so that this stuff doesn't smell that horrible. 
It actually smells kind of good. Like, like cherry. You still want to make sure you're using it in a well insulated area. Now, some interesting thing I came across is they do some of these that are water based, but someone said uh, they wouldn't recommend using that with wood because soft woods anyway, because water actually would like cause the wood to lift up, which I thought was interesting that they would sell that at all. I wouldn't want something water based on my wood. I don't know. I think to me oil makes more sense because it's just going to condition the wood. Okay, so now I'm going to get down here and get this last bit. So, this is what I was talking about. If your rags are too saturated, this is to the point of saturation. Um, It's not really going to be pulling it out the oil like it should. So I'm just going to get one clean one and just. Oh. Went over that one more time. All right. I'm ready for bed. <laughs> All right, so I had to do this though because I had this for nearly three weeks and I, no, yeah. I had this for nearly three weeks, it's crazy. So I was like, you know, I got it. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm going down here to get the rest. And it was like, I can't be putting this off anymore. I gotta get this done because It says that it can, it'll dry overnight, but then when you put the polyurethane on it, which is kind of like a silicone material, the cure time is seven. It takes seven days for you to dry it in, in order to be have to use it for light use, whatever that means. But then the actual cure time is 21 to 30 days. So I it is, um, I covered, while I was standing, I covered the mirrors, uh, but I decided that I'm going to remove them altogether and then put them back in. And I talked to my dad a bit about this because he does build stuff and, you know, um, so you can remove this without and put them back in the same holes without causing any damage. Um, I will explain that. So first I'm going to remove, I think, the ones at the side. And you want to make sure that your drill is going in the reverse. And then you can kind of just do the last with your hand and take it out that way. So that's the attachment. Now I'm just going to store them all. Uh, in a container so I don't lose anything. And I just want a nice safe place to put the the mirror, the glass once I've got it, once I have it out. It's pretty crowded in this kitchen, but I'll probably just place it on the ground underneath the ladder so it's like out of harm's way. All right, so I want to be mindful, like, not to let this fall down or anything like that. So I just need to be mindful of um, areas that I'm moving the school from. And as soon as this glass feels like it's ready that to be moved or come out, I'll take it out. All right, we're going to do... This top area here. I'm kind of just going to loosen them a bit and I'll do the rest of my fingers. That way I don't have to worry about just pulling down. Yeah. 
So I'm doing pretty good. Alright, I'm just gonna slide it out now. Rather slide it out and have it pull down. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Um I finished the drawers, the inside of the frames, and I still have to do the back, but I want to say that for later because I wanted to start with the polyurethane. thing. And um, this is not, the methods that they give you are when you're doing like flat surfaces, and as you can see, I'm working with multiple dimensions here. So there is someone on YouTube who talk, discusses that. I'm not really using his method. He kind of uses a sock and just rubs it on. I'm not. I'm using a mix of methods. Basically, the foam rush for back areas and then the staining brush for the vertical boards and then we've also used a standing brush for the frame as well what i did do is took somebody else's suggestion this wasn't in the general finishing video but everybody's talking talks about uh how to avoid the bubbles and he suggests thinning out the first coat of the polyurethane with mineral spirits. Um, one part minimal spirits, three parts polyurethane. And that's exactly what I did. So the first coat is actually gliding on pretty thin and that's what you want. You want a very thin coat for the first coat. And then you're gonna let it dry overnight and then apply um, dry overnight and then apply another coat. This actually takes three coats. Once it dries, you're supposed to sand it and then apply the second coat and then repeat for the third. Um, I'm not gonna sand every area. I don't think. We'll see. Because there are just so many components to this. Um, one thing I do say that's a good tip is one, thinning out the first coat. So really the, the job of the first coat is just to seal the color. So, and it's gonna get sanded anyway, so you don't have to worry too much about it. But there's a method to doing this to avoid bubbles, which is just to very gently drag the bristles without much pressure. over the polyurethane. I think because I thinned out the first coat, it's not that bad. Like, there are no bubbles or anything like that. But the second coat, we'll see how that goes. So like I hey guys, a uh, little tired, just got off of work and I'm trying to do some work on this, but I, I hit a setback and I want to share it with you guys so that you don't make the same mistake. Basically, the instructions are, after you apply the first coat of polyurethane, you're supposed to knock it down with a 220 uh, grit or grade sandpaper. I don't know what the technical term is, but that's what this is, 220. And 
Then you add another coat of the second coat of polyurethane and it's supposed to just bring back all the luster and bring back all and it looks good. Um, I that is the general finishes method. I think that's just the general method, anyways, when you're doing gel stains and the top coats. Um, from what I've seen anyway online. I followed a particular method from a woodworker who's been working with wood for 30 years and his project came out good. Now there was a difference though. So the thing is I had a diluted polyurethane and the reason why I diluted the first coat of the polyurethane was to avoid bubbles. So I was following his method to avoid bubbles and a polyurethane coating, which kind of acts like a plastic coating over the wood um, to seal in the color. So um, when he knocked his first coat down, a polyurethane down and then added the second coat, it did come back and it looked good. When I knocked my first coat down, the color was sanded off of this china cabinet in several places. Now that pissed me the hell off because I put a lot of work and effort into this china cabinet. Now I was doing it slowly because I was apprehensive about it to start with. Um, so I was doing it slowly and I noticed like you can't see it right now because I repaired the damage um, by just I just had to get some more Java gel stain and like gently go over the damaged areas with a cloth and the Java gel stain. Um, so it was minimal damage though because like I said I was doing it slowly and I was like you know what let me just stop because even though they tell you to follow a direction you got to go according to what, you, um, what you're seeing and your results are. So this edge here was stripped like you could see the you could see the natural color of the wood through on the edge the, the knobs were completely ruined you could see like this all those um swirls from the sandpaper and the edges all of the color was off and then there were a few little areas because i kind of went in one direction slowly with the um with a sander and then like the edges here the color got pulled off and I had to apply some more Java gel stain like right it was all of the little the creases the edges where the color was being pulled off in certain areas so I said okay that's it not standing anymore um I even did like the inside of here but I don't really mind the color being pulled off because this is the inside of the cabinet. Like no one's really staring at the inside of the cabinet. And it kind of, what it was giving it was a rustic distressed look. Now, if you're going for that look, then fine. For me, not really the look I was going for. Um, it did lighten the color here a bit as well but i'm comfortable with how that looks um like i said it gives it like a rustic distressed look but um what i wasn't comfortable with was the knobs being all messed up and sh like you could tell it was sanded and the color was just completely pulled off and like the edges it looked like someone scratched my the furniture like right here on the edges. So I had to go and add apply a little bit of gel stain to those areas. Um, so I, I think that if you're doing one coat of gel stain, like I did to this cabinet, this is just one coat that you should not knock down the first coat of the polyurethane because you will risk um, pulling off in the process the stain that you put on there. Now, all the videos I've seen, people have done about two to three coats of the polyurethane stain, I'm oh, sorry, of the um, gel stain first. And then when they do the polyurethane, they knock down the first coat of the polyurethane. Now, I think that because they've done two to three coats of the stain, that when they're sanding, they're not pulling up any color because there's enough coats of the stain on the furniture to avoid that. Now, when I just have one here and it was totally damaging my stain, um, even though I had a, a coat of the polyurethane on it. So in the future, I will not be doing that. I did come across one woman's video who said that she put the stain on and she let it sit for a week. And that's because she wanted the best color and really let it set in. And she actually said that she, I didn't hear her mention, now that I think about it, I didn't hear her mention that she sanded at all. She just said after that, she put on the stain. What she got was a stain lift which is another whole thing that happens where the stain can actually pull the color out 
Um, and I definitely had stay lift in some areas, but that I was, you know, perfectly fine with. I didn't actually want the cabinet too dark. I wanted it to look like what it looked like in the magazine and theirs um, wasn't as dark. Um, but what I noticed also is that I don't have a lot of light in this kitchen. So when I do put light on the cabinet, you could actually see that it's not that dark. I'm going to try it with this. No, you can't really see it with this, but no, you can't see it on the camera. But I noticed that um, like when I turned on the, the stove is like right in front of this and I turn on the stove and then it'll hit the cabinet. And I was like, oh, my God, it's just color. What happened? And it wasn't that. It was just the fact that the light was on it. So it's the coloring is not as dark as it actually appears. So yeah, here you go. This is a good example of that. See that? That's actually the coloring is not that dark. It's brighter. It's lighter. You can actually see more of the, the grain and stuff like this. The wood grain that's like in the cabinet. Now, it looks so dark because the lighting in the kitchen is not great. I don't get a lot of sun in this way and I probably will never get a lot of sun in this way. That's just the way that um, it's not really facing the south and there's a building right next to it, a house right next to this building. So it just blocks out any sunlight most of the sunlight uh, from the kitchen. So it'll always have this kind of dark look. So I just uh, want to be careful about, you know, pulling out the color. Um, so be mindful of that, guys. If you're choosing to only put one, sorry, I just used to plug in this phone. If you're choosing to only put one, coat. I suggest not knocking down the first coat of polyurethane. Just move on to the second coat. And if you are afraid of bubbles, dilute your first coat of polyurethane with uh, mineral spirits. One part mineral spirits to three parts polyurethane. So now that that disaster is over. Guys, so it's actually been, I want to say, probably a week since I last um, applied the second coat of polyurethane. I was had only a small amount of the polyurethane left, so I decided to just let, let it dry and then order some more. Um, I don't think I was paying much attention when I ordered because I wound up buying a half a pint, which is this baby can. But I just poured it out into the larger, larger can. It's, it's definitely going to be enough to finish the job. Um, so I needed that and I also needed some more of this um, mineral spirits to clean out my brush and get it ready for the application. So got that going there. Okay, and I ordered both of the products on the General Finishing website. I do want to share some information I came across because um, you guys saw what happened when I sanded um, the first coat. Well, I didn't do a full sand, but I started and then I stopped because I just noticed it was just ruining all the work I had done. And I found an article online, actually, that talks about an, an, another, I found a blog online where someone uh, talked about how they didn't sand. And there's actually, it's like a debate over whether or not you need to sand between the coats of polyurethane. And you have one because they basically felt like they were just ruining or they say knocking down the coat. But the reason why they do that is because they say that it helps basically the sec the next coat adhere better. But there's um actually I think it's an article that was written I'm trying to pull the exact name. Um, I think it's called the Myth. Where is it? Um, Okay, something like the myth with working with polyurethane. I wish I was trying to get the exact. Okay, no, okay. It's called Bob Fletchner is the one who wrote this. And I guess he's known in the woodworking world. And it's called The Seven Myths of Polyurethane. Um, 
Poplar Woodworking, and they talk about how standing is not needed to ensure adhesion between the coats of poly. It's actually not needing, it's not needed in the, between coats of varnish and has never, never has been. Um, uh, and also that sanding between coats should not be relied on to ensure a smooth uniform finish. There are much better methods, none of which waste to finish needlessly. So it is like you're just stripping down all the work. So there is a mindset out there that sanding that you shouldn't actually sand between the coats. And I'm so glad I went with my personal just feelings and, you know, based on what I was seeing, um, what was happening to the dining, the china cabinet as I was sanding it and what was happening to the stain. So I'm going to pull this out. 